Should a punishment be more severe than the crime that was committed? Well, this is one of the questions that our culture is currently asking in a number of places around the nation where we see laws not being enforced because of the punishment being greater than the crime or the situation of the people who are causing the crime. Maybe they're poor and they, they find themselves in circumstances that are less fortunate than others. Should the law be allayed in such cases, taking into account uh, the consideration of their position and what's happening in society. Well, this is actually what we're going to be looking at today as we continue our study in the book of Exodus. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us. You can subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications so that you can receive a devotional, much like this one. We'll read just a little bit of the scripture together and pull one thing from it to be more like Jesus. Well, we're in the middle of God setting forth his law among the people of Israel so that they will know how to act as a community, as a culture, and how to act righteously in, in such a way that God says, this is going to preserve peace for your, um, for your society when things go haywire, right? Because we already have the Ten Commandments we talked about a couple of days ago, and every law that we have now is based in some way or form upon those Ten Commandments. And so today in chapter 22, we get some very practical outworkings of things and what God thinks concerning theft in other areas. Let's take a look at it together. If a man steals an ox or a sheep and kills it or sells it, he shall repay five oxen, an ox, and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief is found breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there shall be no blood guilt for him. But if the sun is risen on him, there shall be blood guilt for him. He shall surely pay. If he has nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the stolen beast is found alive in his possession, whether it's an ox or a donkey or a sheep, he shall pay double. If a man causes a field or a vineyard to be grazed over or lets his beast loose and, uh, and it feeds in another man's field, he shall make restitution from the best of his own field and his own vineyard. If fire breaks out and catches in thorns uh, so that the stacked grain or the standing grain or the field is consumed, he who started the fire shall make full restitution. If a man gives to his neighbor money or goods to keep it safe, and it's stolen from the man's house, then if the thief is found, he shall pay double. If the thief is not found, the owner of the house shall come near to God to show whether or not he has put his hand to his neighbor's property. For every breach of trust, whether it's for an ox or for a donkey or for a sheep or for a cloak or for any kind of lost thing of which one says, this is it. The case of both parties shall come before God. The one whom God condemns shall pay double to his neighbor. If a man gives to his neighbor a donkey or an ox or a sheep or any beast to keep safe, and it dies or is injured or is driven away without anyone seeing it, an oath by the Lord shall be between them both to see whether or not he has put his hand to his neighbor's property. The owner shall accept the oath, and he shall not make restitution. But if it is stolen from him, he shall make restitution to its owner. If it is torn by beast, let him bring it as evidence. He shall not make restitution for what has been torn. If a man borrows anything of his neighbor, and it is injured or dies, the owner not being with it, he shall make full restitution. If the owner was with it, he shall not make restitution. If it was hired, it came for its hiring fee. If a man seduces a virgin who is not betrothed and lies with her, he shall give the bride price for her and make her his wife. If her father utterly refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money equal to the bride price for virgins. You shall not permit a sorceress to live. Whoever lies with an animal shall be put to death. Whoever sacrifices to any god other than the Lord alone shall be devoted to destruction. You shall not wrong a sojourner or oppress him, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. 
You shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. If you do mistreat them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. And my wrath will burn, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall become widows and your children fatherless. If you lend money to any of my people with you who is poor, you shall not be like a money lender to him. You shall not exact interest from him. If ever you take your neighbor's cloak and pledge, you shall return it to him before the sun goes down, for that is his only covering, and it is his cloak for his body. And what else shall he sleep? And if he cries to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. You shall not revile God, nor curse a ruler of your people. You shall not delay to offer from the fullness of your harvest and from the outflow of your presses. The firstborn of your sons you shall give to me. You shall do the same with your oxen and with your sheep. Seven days it shall be with your mother. On the eighth day you shall give it to me. You shall be consecrated to me. Therefore, you shall not eat any flesh that is torn by beasts in the field. You shall throw it to the dogs. And so we see a lot of different laws that are being placed upon the people in this area. But the first half of Exodus is what we're going to focus at today because he talks about the idea of theft, right? That people who are guilty of theft are, are going to be paying back what they've done. At minimum, we see them paying back the, the amount that was stolen. But oftentimes, we see five times that amount, two times that amount, much more than what was needed. As a matter of fact, if they were caught stole, stealing from their house in the daytime, and they didn't have enough money to pay, they could be sold into slavery for their debt. And as we talked about yesterday, we, we looked at the whole idea of slavery was selling yourself off to pay off a debt, and you were sold for six years of your life. So six years of life, you're going to pay back if you couldn't afford that cloak you were stealing, or you couldn't afford that donkey or that ox or whatever. The punishments that we see here are punitive. They, they are on purpose by God more severe than the crime. And it's all to detour the crime so that they would honor God, right? We want you to honor God in our society. And here's how we're going to do it. When you commit a crime, the punishment is going to be greater than your crime, purposefully, so that you will not commit the crime. As a matter of fact, God has a word for those who would ignore the law, no matter if it was done by a rich person or a poor person, a great person or a person who has no status. He calls that person who would not, who would not follow the law or who would overlook the law in order to give preferential treatment to any of these groups wicked. He calls them wicked. We see it so many times in the Proverbs, and we're seeing it worked out in our society today right now, as some of those who are asking the questions and, and giving favoritism to both the great and the poor, we're seeing very wicked actions happening because they're not enforcing the law. And as a result, what we're seeing in many places in our society today, especially where we live at right now, is we're seeing a multiplication of evil that's taking place because the wicked are given preferential treatment over those people who are righteous. So let's take a look at some of the Proverbs that kind of show this, this same idea that, that talks about this idea of wickedness and what happens when we overlook laws such as these. Proverbs seventeen fifteen: He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both alike in an, ab an abomination to the Lord. Proverbs 18.5 It is not good to be partial to the wicked or to deprive righteous, the righteous of justice. Proverbs 28.4 Those who forsake the law praise the wicked, but those who keep the law strive against them. Proverbs 29.2 When the righteous increase, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people groan. So you can see that in each of these cases, we see that wickedness and the, not, the non-enforcing of the law are actually put together. And what is called wicked, it doesn't matter the status of the person. It's the action of not obeying the law that makes one wicked, or the one that overlooks the law in order that justice might not be taken care of. See, this is what we're seeing in Exodus. This is why the, 
the punitive nature of the, of the punishment of the crime is so important. And when we are not punitive in our crime, uh, in, our, in the punishment for crime, we see crime increase. I mean, for example, if you can go to, for example, any store and steal nearly $1,000 worth of stuff, and if you were to go to jail for that, and you only paid a $500 fine, well, then why would you stop stealing when you can steal more than what you would have to pay? It, it's, it's an unrighteous way of dealing with things. As a matter of fact, what we find is the exact opposite is true as well. If the wicked do not punish, we see that the people groan and righteousness is suppressed. But we also see the opposite being true. When we look at Proverbs uh, chapter 11 and verse 10, we see these words. When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, there are shouts of gladness. See, I believe that God wants us to be a righteous people and a righteous society. But we can only be a righteous society when we are judging the actions of people and not looking at their status concerning their actions. When we look at the actions of people, we can then say, this is deserving of right justice. And until we get that, we're going to see the righteous groaning underneath the unrighteousness of the wicked and the actions of overlooking the law. This is why it's so important for us to understand as believers in Christ, as, as our country right now is in a crisis, understanding these things, that empathy for these people and their status, rather than uh, ex, uh, executing righteousness because of their wicked actions, is what's causing many of the problems that we're seeing crime-wise in, in our nation right now. So pray for those who are wicked that they might do the right thing and pray for those who are leaders that they might uh, enforce righteous standards so that the wicked are properly punished and peace can come to our society. I pray that helps you today to pray for our government, pray for the people who are in power, pray for those who, are, who are, um, have authority, that their actions might be righteous and not wicked because when they're righteous, we all benefit from it. God bless you. I hope that helps you this day, and we'll talk with you again tomorrow.